all of you, wherever you're at, whatever part of the world, good morning, good afternoon, evening. We're so grateful you guys are here. I'm seeing some uh, great life hacks in the chat. So Ruth uses lights in her house. I turn on citrus oils in the diffuser. Mm -hmm. Diffuses cheer, smells like sunshine in a bottle. Anything that feels like sunshine. Yes. So great. I've been diffusing. I think I've already shared this here recently, but I've been diffusing often. I'm diffusing green mandarin with a little bit of wild orange and then one or two drops of geranium. And that combination is just lovely. Is green mandarin, wild orange. I'm just going to be a wild orange fan for life, period. So can't go wrong with the citrus. I mean, you just can't. And so any of those citrus oils, right? Bergamot or cheer. Yeah. Like Maria is saying, or elevation oil, which I know is we're, we're keeping an eagle eye on, but I do have a bottle of that, you know, but any of the citrus oils, lemon, of course, I mean, just any of them, they're like, ah, they just kind of lighten things up. Mm -hmm. And, um, can we just give a little shout out? I was just looking for the slide. A little shout out to the new blend doTERRA put out called Endless Summer. Oh, I did not hear about this. I know. They announced it at Leadership. I'm super excited to get my hands on some. Oh, my. So, I know I'm going to be best friends with that blend already. It has right? coconut in it. Coconut. Yeah. And it says so, also right there, the green mandarins in it, bergamot yeah. and West orange. Mm. Yes. That. Yes, please. <laughs> Do we have a date of release on that oil? Do we know? I can't remember. Who can help me out? Who's who's my detail person on the call who can help us with the launch of that endless summer? Anyone? Oh, they also, um, while we're waiting for that answer, check out this other one they announced. Costa Brio. So oh um, there's, there's an oil from Brazil that we source that's kind of like their version of frankincense. It's Brio bon Branco. I'm probably slaughtering the pronunciation, but uh, Matt Hall is telling us all about it. It's it's a really unique but powerful oil. Mm. So lots of good stuff. Both of them have tonka beans. So I don't know what's going on in the tonka bean world, but maybe Wonka tonka. I don't know. Something. Hey, we're here for it. If it smells like delightful summer, yes, please. Right. We Marie are says Marie says they're telling us early summer for those, right? I guess both those blends. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, <sighs> just in transparency, do you already have bottles of this at your home? I wish I did. You know, Emily I mean, Brad I'm not going to make a run on your house for it, but I'm just <laughs> curious. <laughs> Tiffany's trying to plan out her week based on the yes or no answer here. I wish I did. You know, Emily Wright posts these reels of like, all the new stuff that she has on her, on her desk at work. And like, I don't know if, if anything creates more envy in the doTERRA world than those kind of reels. It's like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. let me add to that desk, like so much goodness. So I, I don't, sometimes we get sneak peeks this time. I don't. Yes. I think they sampled I... it. Didn't they let people smell it at leadership? Well, I wasn't there. Do other people know this? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I think, there. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing they did, but I didn't make it over there. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah. I actually got to you guys. I got to actually hang out with Andy and Natalie in person at the DoTerra corporate offices last Friday. That was so that was much so fun. fun. Me and I two know. girlfriends met there. You can rent conference rooms there as wellness advocates and. One of our mutual dear friends had rented us this conference room and we were there doing some creative work. And then Natalie and Andy, because you got an experience doTERRA last weekend, which let's hear how that went. But so oh. fun to see you guys and have a little lunch together, a little catch up, share the things. So much fun. That was super fun. I know. It was fun to hear what you guys are up to and all the creative energy that was flowing. It was mm -hmm. uh, And all the snacks that were there too. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. We don't disappoint. You know, we made it 12 minutes into the call before we brought up snacks. And <laughs> but I think that's pretty good. I know. But listen, <laughs> I'm saying so good. 
And there's lots of snacks that are active right now, and some are healthier than others. I may have bought some Easter candy yesterday for <laughs> various Easter baskets. And oh my God. I drive home in the car, some of that may have been opened. I'm just saying, <laughs> may have happened. But there are some healthier yeah. snacks, P.S. If you are if any of you fig fans, F-I-G, fig fans, you like fig, mm. figs on salads or, you know, fig jam. Well, right now at Trader Joe's, my most recent Trader Joe's, since I have a Ph.D. from there <laughs> in snacks, according to Andy, my recent Trader Joe's snack um, that's brand new that I've just tried is like freeze dried figs, guys. And they're actually really good. If you like figs, I'm just saying. Wow. Yes. Have you tried? Oh, I think uh, I think they have like a fig jam from Trader Joe's. I don't know if it's from yes. Trader Joe's actually, but I yes. am a big fan. Mm -hmm. they, they have like this little Melba toast with the fig jam is so tasty. So good. Yes. I'm just saying so all is balanced in my world because we've had Cadbury mini eggs and freeze dried figs. Okay. It's all come together. It's all come together. <laughs> So grateful for my little doTERRA PB assists, right? Things that help the gut be happy. So beautiful. Yeah. So can I share something that's coming up that I'm Please. super excited about that's timely? I would love it. Um, some of you may have seen this if you're on my, if we're connected on social media or you're on my email list. And if you're not on my email list, I'm going to invite you to get there just simply because we have some fun things coming up. But immediately tomorrow, I'm hosting a mentor masterclass with a dear friend, one of my mentors, Mr. Jack Canfield, and I are doing a free masterclass focusing on dreams, intentional creation, and working through the challenges that arise, like how we work through to actually move into more creation. And so he's incredible. Have you, any of you seen the movie The Secret or read his books, The Success Principles, right? For those of you that have gone through Success Academy, you're really familiar with this work. This is his book. Look at my copy. <laughs> it's well-loved, shall we say. But the Success Principles, he's also the author of all those books, Chicken Soup for the Soul. He's been on Oprah Winfrey's programs many, multiple times. And he and I are doing a free masterclass tomorrow morning. And so if you haven't registered for that, Andy, just put that in the chat box. Maybe we can also pop it over onto our Facebook group too, but it's simple. It's tiffanyspeaks.com forward slash Jack. Easy. tiffanyspeaks.com forward slash Jack. I will tell you, Facebook has kicked me off my own post. <laughs> this is new for me, just so we're all clear. But we put this out Monday night. Yes. What day are we on? Wednesday morning. We went this out Monday night and between me and my VA, you can only apparently make so many comments on your own post or they consider it spammy. And they're like, and so like yesterday it kicked me off. Like, so we're trying to respond because all these people are saying, yes, please send me the link. Please send me the link. And we only got through probably, I don't know, 60 responses and we have several hundred there. And so just know that if you're on that Facebook post, we haven't responded. It's not because we don't want to. So I was like, Lori, can you log in and just respond to these for me you know as herself it's her own account but she's like yeah they only let me do a few and then they kick me off and I understand that it's like anytime you're making mass comments copy and pasting you know the information so it is there it's also on my Instagram link in bio you can find it lots of places but it's really easy there will also be a recording the recording is eleven dollars and eleven cents so if you can't attend live or you'd like to own this recording that option is there on that page as well that you can purchase that. The recording will go to $97 next Monday night. So we give folks a window for that too. But come join us live. If you can be there live, it's at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain and 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon. And come hang out with me and Mr. Jack Canfield. That's taking place tomorrow. Jack is the man. I still remember, I think it might've been you that gave us our first copy of Success Principles. And um, we, we have a very worn copy, thanks to you. So yes, well it, loved. It, it's I call it in his book the Success Principles. Sometimes I just call it the Success Bible, right? Like right? what totally. he basically did was distilled. Like instead of having a whole book on time management, he distilled it into say two different teachings or principles, or having a whole book 
you know, on decluttering and mm -hmm. letting go. He's just put it all in one core place. So, so fun to learn from him. He's such a gem. So I'm excited that's happening. I'm excited that it's Holy Week, right? I don't know about y'all, but if that's something that's near and dear to your own heart is that's really just been up for me the last few years is really studying intentionally each day during Holy Week versus solely just Easter. And there's incredible artists. Our, some of our friends, Andy, turned me on to her. But Paige Payne, hmm. that's something you're drawn to. Paige Payne, if you're Christian or you just like the beautiful artwork of whatever various, you know, everyone's welcome. But it's telling the way she paints Jesus is just really, really beautiful. And the hmm. teachings of that. So anyway, that's something else that I'm really thinking about this week. Really looking forward to more and more spring and spring weather and new beginnings, new creations. Oh, there's just like, okay, we're ready for new, aren't we? Yes. Yes. Maybe we all need to go in and just switch our bedding already on our on our beds just to like, to like claim it, declare it. Spring's yes. here. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Put away I the sweaters and just yes. own it. Well, okay, I'm in, I'm totally in for that. <laughs> no, but truly is this, that was one of the suggestions this week is, you know, is these various different each lessons. It's like, what do we need to clear out and let go of? And you might hear that come up on my call with Jack tomorrow too, is partly how you create space for manifestation, right? When you talk about like, if you've seen the movie, The Secret or read the book, and you've heard him as one of the popular teachers on that. And you talk about law of attraction, another word for alignment, law of alignment, mm -hmm. law of attraction, or law of manifestation. Sometimes what happens is there is a need to like, it's just like what winter does. It kind of clears the landscape and then new life shows up. And some of us need to clear the landscape, don't we? Like our homes, our closets, our car, our inboxes. Sometimes it's more emotional or like we, there might be some forgiveness work mm -hmm. of someone else or ourselves, like a releasing of or a neutralization, a clearing out of the landscape of the space energetically. Mm -hmm. That's what I also love so much that Andy and Natalie have helped anchor us in is the essential emotions is mm -hmm. how many of you have emotions at least every day, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> you know, some of those emotions, they're kind of clogging up the system. And so having some of those tools that will help support you and helping you create space for is one of the things Jack taught me years ago. And honestly, you guys, when he said it to me at the time, I was like, uh, not like on board for it. So I'm just being transparent. And initially, he said this to me and I was in a very small group with him at his home in Santa Barbara. And he said this, he said, nothing's missing in any of your lives. And I was like, oh, really? I got a list, you know, like. Think about this. Nothing is missing in your life. And then he went on to say, you simply must make room for it. And a lot of times that's a, a releasing of the old or clearing the landscape, you know, clearing out those garden boxes. I think when, you know, it's similar when Jesus said, you don't mix old wine and new wine. Is you clean it out. Like we don't just, I'm not going to go out to my garden boxes without doing a cleaning out of the old rubbish that's there to prepare the soil to receive the new. And so some of you this week in the next couple of days, you know, April 1st being Monday, and as we transition out of the begin the end of first quarter, for some of you in the next couple of days, that might really sit on your heart is okay. And taking some action around clearing off your desk, clearing out your closet, clearing your garden boxes, clearing energetically, like, okay, maybe I've been holding on to some hard feelings about myself. Maybe I've been being like, gosh, I'm just struggling or I'm not sticking to things and my negative self-talk, I need to clear that out. You know, where it's like, okay, let's cleanse to create, or yeah. I call it sometimes we release to receive. And you mm -hmm. think about that is that might be something that's up for you guys this week. And it, it might be more energetics and turn to your essential emotions to help guide you and support you. And it might be more physical in your space. It's all connected. So anyway, I don't know about you, yeah. but if you guys are in on that, what space do you want to choose in the next several days to at least make progress with? What space comes up to you intuitively that you want to clean out, let go, cleanse? And maybe it's, yes, what, what sp physical space? Are you feeling more drawn to your bathroom, your junk drawer, your pantry, your fridge, your bedroom, your closet, your desk, your car? 
What space do we want to take on? I think we support each other, right? Of that with like in community, like whatever comes up for you. What space are you feeling drawn to? I'm going to say my office, this space I'm in right now, this desk here, you can't see it in frame, but it's like my desk needs some love. <laughs> so I'm going to be working on that. I love this. Denise says my mind. Yes. Amy says my room. Cindy says closets in my garage, my phone. Yes. All photos and downloads and messages. Yes. Dr. Christine is saying her downstairs first floor. Yeah. Good stuff, you guys. Okay. Just on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, now, when I spoke on this topic of releasing at um, leadership. And so if anybody wants to, to watch a recording of that. Yes. It's on YouTube. And um, here's the link. So, um, Andy, would you mind then sharing just as intuitively a few thoughts from that talk since you've already gone deep on this topic? Because I just think I don't want us to glaze over it because it really it's like, oh, yeah, that's nice. It's like, no, it's really a mm -hmm. core part of creation. Yeah, I mean, it um, what Natalie and I have, have known for a long time, the, the importance of of clearing, of of releasing um, but it just really hit me hard, um, right before leadership, how it's literally the path for attraction. Like you only attract what you've created space to attract. Mm. So, you know, releasing can take so many different shapes and forms, right? It can be, um, prayer. It can be writing down all the negativity and, and the hurt on a piece of paper and then burning it. It can be going out and yelling at a tree. It can be, you know, a religious rite or, or ritual. Like there's so many ways to release. Uh, it could be talking to a coach, you know, Natalie and I have, have had um, a weekly session with our energy coach um, mm -hmm. for 15 years now, every week, we don't miss a week. And, um, and so whatever shape that needs to take for you, commit to it, like be all in because we really, I mean, literally cannot expect anything to come in that we want until we've made space. And so many times it, it looks like going out and cleaning our garage, you know, taking a load to the dump, taking a load to DI. Like that's, it seems so ridiculous, but Natalie is the master of it. Like she does not hold on to stuff. I, I, I make fun of her sometimes because she's so non-sentimental, but like literally something hits the table and she's like, Hey, where does this go? Where does it, how can I get this out of my space? And it's like, wow. And that's, that's how she's attracted so much is um, mm -hmm. she's, she's, I think, I think we're learning to be excellent releasers. Mm. That's so, so good. I mean, I just love that because again, it's like what you just said, you only attract what you've created room to receive. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, we're making room for that. We're cleansing that out. Um, if you have a copy of the book, success principles, I think it's chapter 20, no, it's chapter 28, principle 28, where mm -hmm. he does goes deep on this too. And this topic of cleansing. And he talks about a dear friend of his named Martin Root. And he says that Martin says every time he's clear, he wants to attract new business. He cleans his desk. He cleans his closet. He cleans out his garage. And he literally, it's like physically, there's an energy that he's making room for the new to show up in his life. And so it's just that awareness that we go, okay, we're, we're in, we're in cleansing mode right now. And so, mm, you know, as we're, we're heading into a new season and we're still on the cusp of it, right. We're in transition still, at least here in Utah, like our weather, as we've mentioned, is like, oh, it's snowing. Oh, it's sunny. Oh, wait, mm -hmm. what are we doing? But some of that, again, we need the water and we're grateful for it and it is what it is. So we just, you welcome it, but it is like, oh, we're in this cusp of let's make room for the new. Yeah. How powerful that is. An oil that I've loved to diffuse around this is that lemon eucalyptus oil. Mm. Isn't that what it's called? Lemon eucalyptus. It's like yeah. a bow of the two. Yeah. And I know I already saw ab above. I think it was Denise was saying, and Amy was talking about lemongrass is also great for clearing mm. out cleansing. So this is what I so love about these essential oils is how much they can influence our lives for the positive, influence our bodies, our health, our minds, our emotions, our yep. spaces. 
-hmm. you know, you might really have thinking like lemon, also just plain lemon. If you're like, oh, I don't have lemon grass or lemon eucalyptus, lemon is a great cleanser, right? It's just utilizing yeah. that. I don't know if you guys know this is a little side tangent, but lemon is great for if you ever have like a sticky something on a surface or like, especially like an example is if I've bought a picture frame, a photo frame, and you pull this, you know, the price tag off of it, and it's a sticky tag on it, say, but sometimes instead of using Windex, I just put a little lemon oil on it and it will, anything that's really sticky, lemon is great for that. So think about your spaces feeling sticky, start diffusing some lemon, lemongrass, lemon eucalyptus, but lemon is a, a queen in helping you with cleansing. Also, that lemon, Karen, huh? That lemon is even great. Like if you get tree sap on mm -hmm. your hands, there's, mm -hmm. there's almost no soap on earth that will get that off, but lemon will. It's, yep. it's incredible. Yeah. So when you think sticky, think lemon, like, yep. okay, I've got stickiness on me, how that can support you. Yes. I love Karen saying also purify. That's a great energy and support. Also, Melissa comes up for me too. It's just so mm -hmm. high vibe. I think of Melissa as a purifier. Uh -huh. right? for me energetically. So, so many good ideas, you guys. Yeah. So love that. <laughs> yes. And Marie saying, yes, curse you, Ross Marshalls, TJ Maxx and Coles for putting price tags on the glass part of the frames. I literally just bought a picture frame for friends. I'm going to a birthday party tonight and printed off a photo for us that of us as dear friends going in a photo frame. I just bought a photo frame at um, Home Goods, which is TJ Maxx. There you go hand in hand. So I feel you, but you know what? I sure love home goods and that is a great spot for cute little photo frames. PS. <laughs> yes. So I love cute. that. So beautiful. Well, should we jump into some coaching? Yes. Just as one quick thing before we transition this conversation, Ruth is asking, it came to host some panelists is lemon eucalyptus. Okay. To diffuse with cats. I'm going through the basement and she lives there for now. I'm a new cat mom and one week into her mother cat hood. I am not a cat person. I, I do know that um, furry animals are like, they need way less oils than us uh, bigger fur balls. So you got to like cut things. I mean, think about the weight, right? How much body mass is there? So I know that they use way less. I don't know. Could, can somebody chime in here? about yeah. lemon eucalyptus because I'm not a not a cat person yeah um I think that you know most of the oils I ever diffuse I have a dog a huge dog big golden retriever he's like 85 pounds so he's a big boy he's fine with everything I diffused um but if it's a more intimate space that might be something to consider and you can of course try it out sometimes and yes I love Janet Rourke that woman is a saint yeah. Love her. And she's a veterinarian, also connected deeply with the essential oils. She might be a great person to ask. So here we go. Okay. Do we have, what's going on for you guys? How can we best love on you and support you today? Coaching wise, if you want to come on uh, live with us, we'd love to see your face. And if not, we totally respect that too. Um, Amy asked a question in the chat. Q&A chat box. So maybe we start there. Amy, do you want to join us live and talk through that in person? Yeah, or would you prefer? Just, okay, she, great. She just came on. Great. Hi, Miss Amy. Well, hello. Welcome. How can we help you? Good morning. So we have a fun question. Um, I had a gal who joined my team a long time ago, years ago, when she lived here in the United States and wanted to build and we kind of started her up. But then she actually made a big change in her life and moved to Israel and uh, changed religions and um, kind of started a new life there. But she still loves the oils. But at the time, she couldn't buy them in Israel. Well, I've just you know, I've looked. And in the last 10 years, we actually do now have an open um, market in Israel. So her mother has been taking had take she lives here. And so she took over her account and has been ordering um, ever since then. And then she takes the oils with her to Israel whenever she visits her. And so we were having a chat the other day and said, would you be interested now that you have two babies and you're really even more so into natural solutions? 
actually trying to start up um, your doTERRA business, but in Israel? And she said, yes, but we weren't sure how that would work. And could she still have her mom be here in the United States? And could her mom start her own account and still share a leg with someone that's in Israel? So just need some quick tips on how someone starts when they're in another country and if the rules are the same. Like, do I coach the same? Do Where do I even find out about PV levels, uh, the prices? That's I've, I've never done an international connection that way. So just to clarify, um, your friend has moved to Israel, but the mom has taken over the account and the mom lives in the U.S. Is that right? Yeah, but the, it, there's no paperwork that shows that. It's still totally under my friend's name and it still looks like it's her account, but it's just the mom actually orders and has it sent to the, her house here in the United States. And then she'll travel to Israel to deliver the oils, but it's still under Kimberly. Kimberly's the one who has the account. It's still under her name. We've just never changed her address to Israel. Okay. So, so the question is, can, can a second account be opened in Israel? No. Can Kimberly go ahead and take ownership of that account, changing her address, going ahead and having it be um, based in Israel? And then could she start growing and sharing with people yeah. in Israel? And then can she still have a joint team? Like, can she put her mom as a new U.S. person and can she mix the two? Or does it have to be like a U.S. leg and then an Israel leg? Does it get too tricky to try to combine them on one team leg? That kind of thing. Yeah, she can definitely switch her account to to an Israel account. Like there's no, it's a fully open market. Um, in fact, okay. when we were there for the presidential trip um, last summer, um, you know, because we were in, in Jerusalem, um, a bunch of us were like, hey, should we do an event for our Israel team? And we're like, yeah, no problem. So last minute, like literally two days before the event, we threw, it, threw something together. And I think we had 500 people there. Oh, like wow. With two okay. days notice. So so the market is booming. Like it's doing really, really, really well um, in terms of like, can you have one leg in this market, one leg in that market? Absolutely. We have a global seamless compensation plan, which means it doesn't matter where, where the volume is, all volume acts the same. So okay. um, it's really, really powerful. Um, and so where so do we access like the prices, like how much something costs and what the PV in that country is? Um, I would turn to Senor Google and search doTERRA Israel. Um, okay. And so let's see what we've got here. Um, and then I would add price list to that. And I'll just show you what I've got here. So my first top result is the... Israel OTG price list. And um, it looks like they've got it in English and Hebrew and um, prices in shekels, love that. Um, and then I think I saw an NFR list as well as, as the second result. So a lot of these foreign markets don't have every product that we have, right? Yeah. And so, yes. um, doTERRA is super creative about how can we help people get all the goodness. And, um, and so they, they create an NFR round. NFR stands for not for, re not for resale. And so it looks like for Israel, they can order NFR through Europe. And so maybe like, I don't know what the products are, but maybe like one vitality isn't available in Israel, but they could order it from, yeah, and that's just an example, right? Um, that's okay. how Australia or, or, um, yeah, so Australia orders a lot of the MetaPower products that way, um, NFR. <clears throat> um, I mean, yeah, there's there's some countries, like when we were in Thailand, they literally just have a handful of oils. And so they have to get all the supplements and all the extra things, um, NFR. So little tip there for uh, building internationally. Um, they No market has as many products as the U.S. does. Some of them okay. have, but don't have. Uh, mm -hmm. do you know that in Japan, the top selling product is is a mineral water. So wow, you know, fun <laughs> fact there. Um, yeah, we actually bought another MLM that, and we took on their product. So that's our best seller in Japan. So, anyways, um, yeah, but that's um, that's the short and sweet of international. You don't have to worry about where your volume falls. 
like a premier could be made up of a third Israeli, a third U.S., and a third Japanese volume, and it's still a premier. Okay, and it's still the six hundred that would be needed for like a three by three, and yep. it's all those rules. Okay, exactly. perfect. Yep. Thank it's you, Doterra. Global, that's, that's what global seamless compensation plan means. You don't have to worry that's about great. where where the volume falls. So, it's it's amazing. It's a gift. Okay, one other quick question because we were thinking this may be a, a helpful asset. How do we access our internal email system? Like if someone does send you an email, where does that show up on my back office? I actually had my um, leader send me one and then we couldn't find it. So I would like yeah. to use that system more. <laughs> um, so let me, uh, if somebody knows the answer faster than me, yeah. tell please, us. <laughs> please tell us because I would just log in, click on back office, and for some reason, I can't even click on the login button. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> oh, I'm feeling so challenged right now. Um, so who, who can, okay. Katie, there so we go. team and then message center. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I knew it would yeah. be easy, but I tell you, there's so many good things on there that sometimes it just I like, know, right? it goes above me. <laughs> so right, great. Thank you, Katie. <clears throat> All right, well, thank y'all. I think that we're excited about this possibility. I know. Israel is a fantastic market. They're they're so committed. Um, yeah, we've got we've got a great team there, and um, we have a lot of essential emotions coaches from Israel, and ah. so it's it's really exciting what's happening over there. So oh, that's something that she would love. I, I will I'll t I'll plug her into that as well. She she would like that. And then as far as the vegan. Um, you know, with kosher things, is our vegan LLV, is that in line, do you know, with what they consider to be kosher? Um, I'm sure they have um, a kosher and a halal list. Um, I okay. just don't know where that would be. So just, I would just Google that as well. Okay, perfect. I will. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Happy, Great to see you. Happy here. You too. <laughs> we'll see ya. Bye. Okay, we've got someone else raising their hand. Um, so um, Esther is asking about the the, six, the uh, health challenge up level twenty one. So we are we are switching to a different sort of back office that's going to power that, and so um, we've got everyone in a in a wait list right now. So like it's it's not. I mean, it doesn't start till April 1st, but um, even if you try to go sign up, it's it's just kind of a wait list. So let me send you the link to that. And then um, if anybody wants to join the challenge for April, you can join the wait list and then you'll get notified as soon as we are live and ready for you to, to jump in with us. So um, I think that's Esther's question. Um, that's what she put in the, the Q&A. So I will post that. Um, we've had a really great experience with the March challenge. Um, so fun to watch everyone just dive in with their health, their health goals. Um, for those of you who weren't on with us last week, um, we, we experimented with a, a, a beta health challenge that's just a 21 day, you know, let's make some good habits. Let's do it together. Let's hold each other accountable. And there's just, like seven or eight things that you check off every day if you did them. And, um, and then there's a bonus thing every day. And so we did, you know, we did a deep dive into the supplements, uh, strength training, stretching, uh, meditation, uh, journaling, um, even cold therapy. Um, it was just really fun. And so uh, the whole idea is up level your life in, in 21 days. So uplevel21.com is the, the web address, but I also put in the link, the uh, the wait list for the April challenge, which starts April 1st. So I'll just add that to our Facebook friends. And uh, yeah, we'd love to see everyone jump in. Um, the cool thing is, um, you know, we all could use a little positive peer pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the design of this whole thing. Like, let's Let's just run together. Let's let's make it a little bit easier. Let's do a life hack mm. and make this easier for all of us. So that's that's the intention, and that is the the results that we're seeing. So mm -hmm. it's fun. So okay. good. It looks like Layla has a question too. Okay. 
Becky's asking, is this health challenge something doTERRA is doing or your team is doing? So Natalie and I started masterminding with a lot of our top leaders. And um, and so it's not a doTERRA sponsored event. Um, it's it's just, it's field led. And so um, we have um, a, a trainer on our team, Chelsea Wood, who's been in the coaching space for, I don't know, a decade or more. Yeah, she's such a bright light. We ran into her on yeah. Friday too. That's right. That's oh yeah, that's right. Yes. So she's been um, just pivotal in helping make this happen. So, so that is the latest on the challenge. So Layla, I think you're on with us. If you'd like to um, join us, we'd Hello. Hello, I'm just, I have my video off because I'm driving, but I have a quick clarifying question about a product. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yay, great. Um, so I've gotten a question about Adaptive and then Serenity, the oil blend that they're not listed as for internal use, but then we do consume the Adaptive capsule and then the Serenity capsule. So I just wasn't sure why the actual oil blend is not considered for internal use. Do you have any idea about that? Well, I have... I have my own opinion. I don't have like an official statement from doTERRA. Okay. Um, there are many, many, many oils that are that by design, they're meant to be taken into our body through the skin. And yeah. that's that's just how they're designed, right? Like if, I, I think of deep blue as, as the perfect example. Deep blue is incredible for all things muscle and joint and like just incredible, right? But like if somebody yeah. said, okay, great, then let me take some internally. I'd be like, um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't really recommend that because, you know, we have a deep blue polyphenol, which is the same idea of let's reduce inflammation, but it's a totally yeah. different technology that we're going to use if we're taking it internally. Mm -hmm. The way our body processes things through the GI tract is totally different than how it processes th things through the skin. And so the same thing I would say is true for adaptive and serenity. It's not that it's dangerous. Okay. To, it's not dangerous to take it internally. It's just not designed for internal use. It's it's really it's it's really just like just to help people get the best benefit of of um, the product is you know let's let's use this one on the skin. So that's how I would answer. You know, um, same thing is true of, of balance oil. Same thing is of true of so many oils, right? It's just, um, it's not that it's unsafe. It's just not designed for that. Got it. Okay. So the oil blends are to be used, right? They, because they don't say supplement on the bottle, not for internal use, but then not to be confused that then the adaptive capsule and the serenity capsule, of course, are internal, but it's not necessarily directly the same blend that's included. In the exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any blend that is that is that is put in a um, a capsule is uh, custom designed for that um, that use. So it's right. um, yeah, we can't just assume that it's it's uh, apples and apples, right? It's it's it might have the same, it might be in the same family, but not necessarily the exact same blend. Got it. Okay, that's great. That's really lovely because I was sort of assuming. Oh, it says adaptive capsule it's got that blend in it so fabulous thank you the question has just come up with a couple of clients and i didn't know the answer so wonderful thank you so much I appreciate yeah it. great great question yeah and if anybody has a more um yeah so i'm just reading the chat looks like that's been confirmed from dr hill and and others so that's that's good um information Denise is saying to check the, the product information pages. Um, so super useful. Thank you so much for chiming in there. Awesome. Great questions. Um, and Tiff, feel free to chime in if you've got any mm -hmm. thoughts or anything you want to add. Well, my ad is just, I just love all of these products. <laughs> like I'm so grateful for them.
Right. And they are, of course, different going to be combinations of what you'll ingest versus diffuse or put on your skin. But thank you, Layla. So good to hear your voice. And but yes, I love those Serenity gel caps. And then I love Serenity essential oil. Right. And just how you utilize them differently. So, so grateful for that. Anyone else have a question or how can we best serve or support you today? Anything else that's up for whether it's you personally or within your team? So we have a question in the Q and A. They say, I believe that anything is possible. I've always known that presidential dime is where I'm going. I was playing with the unit level numbers and it makes way more sense to focus on six leaders and then help them with their beliefs and attract their six leaders. Do you know anyone who's become been successful with this strategy? So I assume that when you ask that question, you're saying like six versus three, right? Like, um, like I, so maybe, maybe clarify if you can, what the, um, um, you know, what, what the alternative is, um, because obviously, yes, if, if I have six on my front line and they each have six on their front line, et cetera, et cetera, of course, that's going to, um, at least double your unit level, right. As, as opposed to three. So, um, the short answer is yes, yeah, six is better than three. Um, but, I, I think maybe what you're asking is um, as a strategy, should I launch six instead of three? And my answer to that would be kind of like, you know, raising children. If someone is, if, if someone could choose how many children they have at a time, they're like, I've heard it's better to just do them all at the same time. Just have six children all at once. Just get the raising done, you know, bam, wham, bam, six, 18 years later, I'm, they're out of the house and I'm done. Is, is that what you recommend? I'd be like, well, it takes a pretty special person to have six babies and six kids in diapers and, you know, doing that runaround with, with all in the same phase. And so um, if you have, like, I, I've only probably met three or four people in doTERRA who most of them came from other companies. They, they were experienced network marketers and they came in with a game plan um, and, and they started talking to partners. And so they hit the ground running with four, some of them five leaders. Um, I don't know anybody who's really launched with six and, and, and kept those same six. Um, so I, I guess, um, yeah, I just need a little more clarity on, on your question to make sure I'm answering it. Um, because yeah, six, six will earn you more. Um, six will get you higher ranked. So you'll you'll earn you more not only on the pools uh, and, and the the rank bonuses, but also um, the unit level. Just for obvious reasons, right? Like you only get paid on seven levels. So if if that seven levels is is more full, then yes, the the pay is higher. So anyways, hope hope that was helpful. Not sure if I totally answered that question, but. Yes. I love that Marie says six at one at once. Wham, bam. Funniest thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> that was pretty good. We actually met a couple. Yeah. We had a couple come over the other day who has quadruplets and um, they had one child already. And then they had these quadruplets. And so I'm trying to like visualize going from one to five children overnight. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't wrap my brain around it. I don't think it's enough adaptive you could possibly give me that would help me navigate that. Like, oh my much, goodness. I mean, how much adaptive is that going to require? Yeah. Yeah. It takes broad shoulders. Like, so. you literally would have to have like a live in nanny because, like, right? otherwise you would never sleep. Because by the time, you know, one gets up yeah. in the night, you feed them, change them, uh -huh. put them back down. The next one's, I mean, four oh, newborns yes. at one time. Yeah. Just mad respect for anyone Huge. who's multiple children at a time. Huge. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, um, yeah, Cindy's making some great comments too. So if that was you, it was an anonymous person who asked that question. So that's why I'm being vague when I say you, because I didn't there was no name. Mm -hmm. um, so re be sure to read Cindy's comment. It's a great one. Um, 
Okay, question about basil that I can't answer. Um, isn't basil an aromatouch? Yeah, that's what Denise is saying. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, cool, cool. Basil oil. You know what oil I'm also loving just getting into more so this year out of the blue, not that anyone even cares, but here we go is because, but I think we should know, like there's so many amazing oils is rosemary oil, mm. like all the various ways been for rosemary. Yeah. It's like, cause I love rosemary plants and I love to cook with rosemary. Mm -hmm. And so to have rosemary oil, you guys, my goodness. Anyway, yep. when you said basil, I thought rosemary, I'm not, I know they're not the same. Just to be clear, yeah. but I love rosemary oil. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love Denise's question. Denise has a great one. She says, how do you support builders who resist having you support them? Mm. <laughs> like, how do you raise teenagers? <laughs> <laughs> Bill, yeah, doesn't that feel similar, Denise, right? Like raising a teenager for, and trying to support builders who maybe resist you supporting them. Yes. If I want to hear thoughts on that. Yeah. So I've never raised a teenager, right? I've had nieces and nephews and so forth, but kids I've worked with lots of humans and all of us have an inner teenager. Yes, I do. You do. All of us have that like inner 17 year old. That's like, you're not going to tell me what to do, or I want to be my own person. And I do think there's some greatness in that. It's like our own person, authenticity, my intention regularly with any relationship. So whether this is your spouse, your child, your team member, your leader, your resistance, you know, builders is lead heavily with questions. That's the skill sparks part of it, right? Then you have the emotional influence, which is your energy and the best that you can do, which we all get to do. This is how many of you in the last 24, 48 hours, or even seven days have had to maybe reset or clear your energy in an interaction with your spouse with a child, with a team member, with a complete stranger at the post office, whatever it might be. And so it's like energy plus skill will create your outcome. And so the energy is if I'm looking at that teenager or that team leader and in my thoughts, I might be saying the words like, oh, I'm so grateful for you. But in my thoughts, I'm like, you drive me nuts. I can't stand you. You bug me. Why are you such a pain in my butt? You know, you're so resistant. You don't appreciate me. You this and this and this. Like we're just truth tellers on this call. Right. I definitely have thought those thoughts even recently at times, right. As humaning is hard sometimes. So one is like, we talked earlier of like cleansing that thought and that energy. Okay. And then dropping back into is like, how can I best support you? What do you want to create? What would great supports? Here's some questions, Denise. I love when I'm mentoring someone in this kind of a scenario that you're talking about is what, what do you want? You know, what is it that you most desire to create? How can I best support you? And what does great support look like or feel like to you? How often do you want to hear from me? How do you prefer to hear from me? What's the skill or the tool you'd like to develop this month or this quarter? And how can I best help and support you to get to where you want to be? And the more that it feels like we're in partnership versus parenting, right? Because parenting is I'm the parent. Let me help. I know best. And the more we move into partnership, which is we're on this together the more that will help you have influence, which is what you're asking for. Because the resistance is, hey, they're giving you some either verbal or energetic boundaries versus like, hey, I want to partner with you. Yeah. And so she's saying, I've asked those questions and she responds with essentially, I'll let you know. Yeah. And you're saying, and I get the feeling she maybe doesn't trust me or doesn't like me. And that may or may not be true, right? Like there may be, there's a whole story that's there. And so I think it's more of like, first and foremost, cleanse your own energy, drop into and coming as like, okay, well, how can I best support you? And asking that directly is what does great support look like for you? And you may even ask her, is there anything in our connection or our, you know, our friendship or relationship that needs to be addressed? Has there been anything like if I've ever hurt your feelings or something that's been out of alignment for you? Now, I realize that can feel really vulnerable. But all we're doing is asking and the cleaning up, the willingness to go there and saying, and then stating the intention. My intention is to help you thrive and to help you grow. And I and I even would say this, I would say this as a spouse for me personally. I would say this as a leader. I won't always get it right, but I'm committed 
I'm committed to learning and growing and helping be a better partner with you to help you get what you want. And I'd even use that language is I want to be your partner. I want to help be a better partner, 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 partnership versus even using like as your leader, right? It's as your partner that your business partners truly. And ultimately at the end of the day, you know, you can only control Denise, how you show up. So you do your part to cleanse your energy, see him or her in that space of their power, their potential, you know, sending them good energy, praying for them, and then utilizing and practicing the skill of asking those questions or even asking like the cleansing questions. If there is something that needs to be addressed or looking at. Yeah. But yes, it's like, just acknowledging, like Andy put that in the chat box. How can I best support you? What does great support look like to you or feel like to you? And I won't always get this right, but I do want to be your partner and I'm committed to working on this with you and supporting you and, you know, aligning us together so we can help you achieve what it is you desire. Yeah. But it's, you know, again, I think some of it that's your work to do, Denise, right? And some of your comments is is looking at perhaps, you know, showing up is that, like you say, I just want so much for her success. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that that's your heart and your intention. And wherever your own storytelling might be of like, oh, I don't know, or she this or she that, and, you know, or maybe she doesn't like me. That thought is not going that thought alone, like, oh, how those feelings can come up. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true. So it's just the awareness, though, it's like, hey, I'm coming back to I'd like to create that opportunity. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so but I love the real talk of this, Denise. And again, it sounds like if you're doing a lot that's there, but I'd also maybe what you get to practice too is detaching from it as well. Because once you show up and make the deposits, people still have their own agency and you could be the best leader, the best partner, the best spouse, the best parent on the planet. And you're still dealing with someone else who has choice and they may not choose to receive your kindness. They may not choose to receive your support. Your job, as I was right, I coach a top realtor, real estate agent as one of my private clients. And she has people in her brokerage and different agents. And she's the president currently of the board in her local regional area. And I said, I reminded her of our, in our coaching session last week, your role as a leader, she has a leader that's struggling on her team. She, I said, your role as a leader is to create the space for people to grow. That's your role. I'm going to provide books podcasts, links, suggestions, questions, coaching, but whether people absorb what you're offering a little, like they, you know, take some breadcrumbs off your offering or they take a full feast. You can't control that. Your job is to cultivate the space for people to grow. I think that's leadership. And I think that's parenting is your role. We create the space for these humans to grow. Parenting is a little different, obviously, with ages and levels of so forth and boundaries and protection and so forth. But in this role, it's like you can't control this leader. So, again, thank you for this. But you are. That doesn't mean you don't have any influence. You have a lot of influence. Influence your own brain. Influence your thoughts. Develop the skills. Have the conversations. But then at some level, some degree of detachment that it's like where we, we release any of that temptation, the codependency, like I have to fix this is I'll show up in this way. And she still has choice. Andy, what would you add to that parenting or partnership either way? Yeah, I know I, I'd, I'd add my own amen because, um, yeah, I just love everything you've shared. Um, the, the million dollar question that I think most of us forget to ask is how can I best support you? Like put the ball in their court, you know, like what does ideal support look like to you? That is such, I mean, that, that question, if, if I had my upline reach out to me and ask me that question, I would, I would just melt, you know, like it's, it's so simple, but so powerful mm -hmm. and, and to come 
with that question with just clean energy, you know, like no, no neediness. Um, cause I, I've also seen where people have this need to be needed and no one likes that. Like the, the, and, and the fact is we all do, right? We all love to be loved. We all need to be needed. And when we can come to every relationship with just, um, like I'm here for you. I'm here no matter what. If if I feel love, great. If not, I'm still here. Like I'm not going anywhere. That's the best kind of um, secret sauce to bring to a marriage, to parenting, to business. Like just here no matter what. And I, I listened to a podcast this morning um, it's, it's religious. So if that turns anyone off, then I, you know, don't go there. But, uh, Dr. Je uh, Jennifer Finlayson Fife mm. is, is a local and she is just like, oh my goodness, like incredible. And then she had an interview with Adam S. Miller, who's another one of my all time favorite authors. Um, and, um, and I got really, really emotional this morning, like mm. more, more than I have in a really, really long time uh, listening to this podcast um, because they talk about what love looks like. You know, what does it really look like to show up just completely vulnerable and just like naked in every sense of the word? And, and they talk a lot about intimacy in the, the emotional sense. Like, how does it, how do we show up um, for the project of love. Like so many of us show up expecting love to be this reward, but what Adam Miller's whole thesis is, is that love isn't a reward. It's, it's, it's an act, it's, it's a work, it's a project. And, and marriage is just a commitment to show up in that space. And um, I, I can't do it justice, but if, if anybody wants a really, really good listen, um, go, go take uh, yes. um, 50 minutes and mm -hmm. soak it up and let me know what you think. Cause it was, mm. it was really good. It's, it, it also deals with loss and um, just how, um, Loss is, is part of life. Um, and, and he quotes um, the Buddha who says, you know, we, we all forget that we're dying. Like all of us are dying. And so how can we make the most of this moment knowing that? Like how can we be even more present in the act of, of dying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really beautiful. So... Anyways. So what do you feel like when you say this morning and before we wrap, like if you'll just ask your own heart, your gut, I just feel like I'd get to ask you this question when you were listening to that today, what was the present feeling or thought that really settled upon you that had such an impact? Hmm. I mean, we've all had loss, right? And, um, and we've all wrestled with with love and and how others have showed up for us and um i don't know i was just so inspired by by this idea that i i guess i've i've thought a lot about non-attachment through my life but um i don't know something about the way they they captured this concept in this conversation of like, I, I will be here no matter what you do, like nothing. And, and it feels like the kind of God that I believe in. Hmm. Like there's nothing I can ever do that will add to or take away from his perfect love for me. So 
Mm. It inspired me to show up that way in, in my marriage and my parenting and in my business. Yeah, I feel the depth of that. So I'm going to listen to this too. So maybe we all, that link he put in the chat box. If not, where do we people find it? If you want to just verbally say that, because some people are listening back to this and they won't have a link to a chat box. So if so you just Google um, Jennifer Finlayson Fife. Adam Fife Elder. is spelled F-I-F-E, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, Google... Uh, Dr. Finlayson Fife and Adam Miller. It's the first result that showed up for me. Hey. Love, loss, and lo living life on life's terms. Mm -hmm. so. I am saving that for myself. I'm going to listen to that. So my invitation to you is whether you listen to this podcast or not, there's been so many gems shared, but is leaning into is how we love and how we cleanse our own hearts. Again, we talked a lot about cleansing today. Use your oils that help with that and cleaning literally a physical space. We're going to work on that in the next few days, but cleansing also our hearts and coming home to love. I think that sometimes our hearts just get debris on top of them. And then our minds, you know, the turbulence and the, and it's cleansing the debris, cleansing the debris, just like we shower regularly. And, you know, it's like, oh, it's that fresh. It's the same thing energetically. And we have these tools to help support that. But thank you for sharing that from your heart. And and I even felt my own self go, ooh, what an invitation, right? Because in many ways, I, I'm aware my own love can be, quote, unconditional. It can be very conditional, right? And not that we're not talking about having, quote, healthy boundaries, but most of us, again, it's like, oh, we close our hearts off. And every spiritual tradition, whether the Kabbalah, the Holy Bible, you know, any of the various teachings, Michael Singer and the Untethered Soul. I mean, whatever I respect how everyone presents is to this, but you'll see a theme that there's talked about regularly that leads to huge heartache, huge disappointment, huge destruction in our lives is having a closed or hardened heart. And so it's like, oh, can I keep, you know, cleanse my heart and keep an open heart? Can I cleanse? And that's a process we repeat many, many times. If we're in long-term relationship with a partner, with a spouse, with a business leader, with a dear friend, anyone you're going to really walk the path with, hand in hand with love is also forgiveness. Is that cleansing power of like, okay, and coming into that. So Thank you. What a rich call. I just feel so blessed mm -hmm. being here and being part of this. Andy, thank you for sharing that with us too. And, and Denise, thank you for your question, you know, and, and some of these thoughts that were, we elaborated to and thank all of you for your questions and being here and what we're working on. We wish you a beautiful rest of your day, a great rest of your week. Happy Easter. We'll see you guys here next week, kicking off April together. And in the meantime, we just send you so much love from us to you. And thank you for showing up for us every week, Jeff. It's a gift. Mm. Love you guys.